Brought to you by wikivd.com Slash musician Saul Hudson, better known by his stage name Slash, is a British-American musician and songwriter. He is best known as the lead guitarist of the American hard rock band Guns N' Roses, with whom he achieved worldwide success in the late 1980s and early 1990s. During his later years, with Guns N' Roses Slash formed the side project Slash A Snake Pit. After leaving Guns N' Roses in 1996 he co-founded the supergroup Velvet Revolver, which re-established him as a mainstream performer in the mid to late 2000s. Slash has since released three solo albums, Slash featuring an array of famous guest musicians, and Apocalyptic Love and World on Fire recorded with his band Miles Kennedy and The Conspirators. He returned to Guns N' Roses in 2016 nearly 20 years after he had left. Slash has received critical acclaim and is considered one of the greatest rock guitarists. Time magazine named him runner-up on the list of the 10 best electric guitar players in 2009 while Rolling Stone placed him at number 65 on their list of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time in 2011. Guitar World ranked his guitar solo in November Rain number 6 on their list of the 100 greatest guitar solos in 2008, and Total Guitar placed his riff in Sweet Child O' Mine at number 1 on the list of the 100 Greatest Riffs in 2004. During 2010 Gibson Guitar Corporation ranked Slash as number 34 on their top 50 guitarists of all time while their readers landed him number 9 on Gibson's top 25 guitarists of all time. In 2012 he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of Guns N' Roses' classic lineup. Early life Saul Hudson was born in Hampstead, London. He was named for Saul Steinberg, an artist. His mother, Ola J. Hudson, was an African-American costume designer whose clients included David Bowie. And his father, Anthony Hudson, is an English artist who created album covers for musicians such as Neil Young and Joni Mitchell. Of his mixed background, Slash later remarked, as a musician I've always been amused that I'm both British and black, particularly because so many American musicians seem to aspire to be British while so many British musicians in the 60s in particular went to such great pains to be black. During his early years, Slash was raised by his father and paternal grandparents in Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire while his mother moved to Los Angeles for work. When Slash was around five years old he and his father joined his mother in Los Angeles, California. His brother Albion Ash Hudson was born in 1972. Following his parents' separation in 1974 Slash became a self-described problem child. He chose to live with his mother and was often sent to live with his beloved maternal grandmother whenever his mother had to travel for her job. Slash sometimes accompanied his mother to work where he met several film and music stars. He was given the nickname Slash by actor Seymour Castle because he was always in a hurry, zipping around from one thing to another. In 1979 Slash decided to form a band with his friend Stephen Adler. The band never materialized but it prompted Slash to take up an instrument. Since Adler had designated himself the role of guitarist, Slash decided to learn how to play bass. Equipped with a one-string flamenco guitar given to him by his grandmother, he began taking classes with Robert Wolon, a teacher at Fairfax Music School. During his first lesson Slash decided to switch from bass to guitar after hearing Wolin play Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones. His decision to play guitar was further influenced by one of his school teachers who would play songs by Cream and Led Zeppelin for his students. 
As a result Slash stated when I heard him do that I said, that's what I want to do. A champion BMX rider Slash put the bike aside to devote himself to playing guitar practicing up to 12 hours a day. 1981-1985 Early Years Slash joined his first band Tidus Sloan in 1981. In 1983, he formed the band Road Crew, named after the Motorhead song The Road Crew, with his childhood friend Stephen Adler who by then had learned to play drums. He placed an advertisement in a newspaper looking for a a bassist and received a response from Duff McKagan. They auditioned a number of singers, including one time Black Flag vocalist Ron Reyes, and worked on material that included the main riff of what would become the Guns N' Roses song Rocket Queen. Slash disbanded the group the following year due to them not being able to find a singer, as well as Adler's lack of work ethic compared to himself and McKagan. He along with Adler then joined a local band known as Hollywood Rose which featured singer Axel Rose and guitarist Izzy Stradlin. Following his time with Hollywood Rose, Slash played in a band called Black Sheep and unsuccessfully auditioned for Poison, a glam metal band that he would later openly deride. 1985-1996, first stint with Guns N' Roses. In June 1985 Slash was asked by Axl Rose and Izzy Stradlin to join the newly founded Guns N' Roses along with Duff McKagan and Steven Adler. Completing the lineup, they played nightclubs such as the Whiskey A Go Go The Roxy and the Troubadour and opened for larger acts throughout 1985 and 1986. It was during this period that the band wrote most of its classic material including Welcome to the Jungle Sweet Child Oh Mine and Paradise City as a re result of their rowdy and rebellious behavior Guns N' Roses quickly received the moniker most dangerous band in the world causing Slash to remark for some strange reason. Guns N' Roses is like the catalyst for controversy even before we had any kind of record deal. After being scouted by several major record labels the band signed with Geffen Records in March 1986. Later that year they began recording their debut album. But initially nothing was accomplished as Slash had developed a drug problem. In July 1987, Guns N' Roses released its debut album Appetite for Destruction, which as of September 2008 has sold over 28 million copies worldwide, 18 million of which were sold in the United States, making it the best-selling debut album of all time in the U.S. In the summer of 1988, the band achieved its only U.S. number one hit with Sweet Child O' Mine, a song spearheaded by Slash's guitar riff and solo. In November of that year, Guns N' Roses released G in Our Lies, which sold over 5 million copies in the U.S. alone despite containing only eight tracks, four of which were included on the previously released EP Live at Like a Suicide. As their success grew so did interpersonal tensions within the band. In 1989, during a show as opening act for the Rolling Stones Axl Rose threatened to leave the band if certain members of the band didn't stop dancing with Mr. Brownstone. A reference to their song of the same name about heroin use. Slash was among those who promised to clean up. However the following year Stephen Adler was fired from the band. Because of his heroin addiction, he was replaced by Matt Sorum of the cult. In May 1991, the band embarked on the two-and-a-half-year-long Use Your Illusion tour. The following September, Guns N' Roses released the long-awaited albums Use Your Illusion I and Use Your Illusion II which debuted at number 2 and number 1 respectively on the U.S. charter feat not achieved by any other group. Izzy Stradlin 
abruptly left the band in November. He was replaced by Gilby Clark of Candy and Kill for Thrills. Slash played his final show with Guns N' Roses on July 17, 1993. In November of that year, the band released The Spaghetti Incident, a cover album of mostly punk songs, which proved less successful than its predecessors. Slash then wrote several songs for what would have become the follow-up album to the Use Your Illusion Twins, Axl Rose and Duff, however rejected the material, with the band's failure to collaborate resulting in no album being recorded. Slash announced in October 1996 that he was no longer a part of Guns N' Roses. Slash stated, at the time Axl and I have not been capable of seeing eye to eye on Guns N' Roses for some time. We tried to collaborate but at this point I'm no longer in the band. Paul Tobias' inclusion in the band was another factor in Slash leaving with Slash having both creative and personal differences with Tobias. However in his 2007 autobiography, Slash stated that his decision to leave the band was not based on artistic differences with Axl Rose but on Rose's constant lateness to concert the alleged legal manipulation Rose used to gain control of the band, and the departures of Steven Adler and Izzy Stradlin. 1994-2002, Slash's Snake Pit In 1994 Slash formed Slash's Snake Pit, a side project that featured his Guns N' Roses bandmates Matt Sorum and Gilby Clark on drums and rhythm guitar respectively as well as Alice in Chains Mike Inez on bass and Jellyfish's Eric Dover on vocals. The band recorded Slash's material originally intended for Guns N' Roses resulting in the release of its Five O'Clock somewhere in February 1995. The album was critically praised for ignoring the then-popular conventions of alternative music and fared well on the charts eventually selling over one million copies in the U.S. alone despite little promotion from Geffen Records. Slash's Snake Pit toured in support of the album with bassist James Lo Menzo and drummer Brian Tichy of Pride and Glory before disbanding in 1996. Slash then toured, for two years with the blues rock cover band Slash's Blues Ball. In 1999 Slash chose to regroup Slash's Snake Pit with Rod Jackson on vocals, Ryan Roxy on rhythm guitar, Johnny Griparic on bass and Matt Laug on drums. Their second album Ain't Life Grand was released in October 2000 through Cock Records. It did did not sell as well as the band's previous release and its critical reception was mixed. To promote the album, the band, with Kerry Kelly on rhythm guitar, embarked on an extensive world tour in support of ACDC. In the summer of 2000 followed by their own headlining theatre tour, Slash disbanded Snake Pit in 2002. 2002-2008, Velvet Revolver in 2002 Slash reunited with Duff McKagan and Matt Sorum for a Randy Castillo tribute concert. Realizing that they still had the chemistry of their days in Guns N' Roses they decided to form a new band together. Former Guns N' Roses guitarist Izzy Stradlin was initially involved, but left after the others decided to find a lead singer. Dave Kushner who had previously played with McKagan in Loaded then joined the band on rhythm guitar. For many months the four searched for a lead singer by listening to offered demo tapes a monotonous process documented by VH1. Eventually former Stone Temple Pilots vocalist Scott Weiland joined the band. In 2003, Velvet Revolver played several concerts during the summer and released their first single, Set Me Free. In June 2004 they released their debut album Contraband which debuted at number one on the US chart and sold two million copies. 
re-establishing Slash as a mainstream performer. A year-and-a-half-long tour followed in support of the album. In July 2007, Velvet Revolver released their second album Libertad and embarked on a second tour. During a show in March 2008 Wyland announced to the audience that it would be the band's final tour, he was fired from the band in April 2008. Slash insisted chemical issues led to the split. The following month Wyland rejoined Stone Temple Pilots. Despite Wyland's departure, Velvet Revolver did not officially disband. In early 2010 Velvet Revolver began writing new songs and auditioning new singers. By January 2011 the band had recorded nine demos, and was reportedly due to make a decision on their singer. However the following April, Slash stated that they had been unable to find a suitable singer, and that Velvet Revolver would remain on hiatus, for the next few years while its members focus on other projects. 2008-2015 5, slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Band members Current members In September 2008, Slash began production on his debut solo album. He described the process of recording by himself as cathartic. He also mentioned working on the album gave him a chance to take a little bit of a break from all the politics and the democracy that is a band and just sort of do my own thing for a little bit. Slash's wife Perla revealed that many different artists would appear on the album saying it's going to be slashed and friends with everyone from Ozzy to Fergie. The album simply titled Slash debuted at number 3 on the US chart upon its release in April 2010. It featured an all-star roster of guest musicians including Osborne Fergie of the Black Eyed Peas, Adam Levine of Maroon 5M Shadows of Avenged Sevenfold Lemmy Kilmister of Motorhead Dave Grohl, Chris Cornell and Iggy Pop. The album also fe features musical collaborations with former Guns N' Roses members Izzy Stradland, Stephen Adler and Duff McKagan. To promote the album Slash embarked on his first solo world tour with Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge, who also appeared on the album, on vocals. Bobby Schneck on rhythm guitar, Todd Kearns on bass and Brent Fitz on drums. Slash opened for Ozzy Osbourne for a leg of Osbourne's Scream World Tour. Slash began working on his second solo album in June 2011. He collaborated with his touring bandmates Miles Kennedy, Todd Kearns and Brent Fitz with the resulting album Build to Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. The album titled Apocalyptic Love was released on May 22, 2012, debuting it on the Canadian Albums Chart. In the beginning of 2013, Slash received award for Best Guitarist of the Year 2012 by Loudwire's readers, Slash embarked on a tour in the summer of 2014 opening for Aerosmith as part of the Let Rock Rule tour. In May 2014, Slash revealed details of his third solo album World on Fire. The album was again billed as Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators and was released on September 10, 2014. It debuted at number 10 on the Billboard 200 chart. 2016 present, return to Guns N' Roses. On December 29, 2015, several days after a Guns N' Roses related teaser was released to movie th theaters, Billboard reported that Slash would rejoin the band to headline Coachella 2016, filling the lead guitarist spot vacated when DJ Ashba left the band. Guns N' Roses were officially announced as headliners of Coachella on January 4, 2016, with KROQ reporting Slash and Duff McKagan would rejoin the band. Slash performed with Guns N' Roses for the first time in 23 years during the band's secret warm-up gig at the Troubadour in Los Angeles on April 
April 1, 2016. The band then embarks on the Not In This Lifetime tour. Session work In 1991 Slash played lead guitar on the single Give In To Me off Michael Jackson's album Dangerous as well as in the opening skit for the song Black or White off the same album. In 1995, he played guitar on DS a controversial song from Jackson's history, past, present and future book one album and in 1997 appeared on the song Morphine off the remix album Blood on the Dance Floor, History in the Mix. In 2001, Slash played on Privacy off Jackson's final studio album Invincible. Slash also joined Jackson on several occasions on stage most notably at the 1995 MTV Video Music Awards playing with Jackson on Black or White. He made two prize appearances during Jackson's 1992 Dangerous World Tour in Spain and Japan, and supported the 1999 charity concerts MJ and Munich playing the same set like he did for the 1995's MTV Video Music Awards. The last time Slash and Jackson shared a stage was on both 2001 Michael Jackson 30th Anniversary Special Concerts in New York City playing Black or White and Beat It. In 1991 Slash collaborated with Lenny Kravitz on Always on the Run the lead single from Kravitz album Mama Said. In 1993, Slash appeared on the album Stone Free, a tribute to Jimi Hendrix performing I Don't Live Today with Paul Rogers and Band of Gypsies. Slash also guest appeared in Carole King's 1994 live concert, which was captured on her Carole King and Concert album. Slash and King appeared on David Letterman to promote the concert. In 1996 he collaborated with Marta Sanchez to record the flamenco-inspired song Obsession Confession for the Curdled soundtrack. Later that year he played with Alice Cooper at Sammy Hagar's club Cabo Wabo in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. The show was released the following year as a fistful of Alice. In 1997, Slash appeared alongside rapper Old Dirty Bastard and rock band Fishbone on Blackstreet's rock remix of their single Fix. He also appeared in the accompanying music video. Also in 1997 he played on the single But You Said I'm Useless by Japanese musician Jay that same year he contributed music to the soundtrack of Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown, several compositions, by Slash a Snake Pit can be heard throughout the film. He also appeared on the Insane Clown Posse album The Great Milenko on the track Halls of Illusion. In 2002 Slash played on the title track to Ellen's album Street Child. In 2003, he participated in the Yard Birds comeback record Birdland. He played lead guitar on the track Over Under Sideways Down. In 2006, Slash played on a cover of In the Summertime on keyboardist Derek Sherinian's solo album Blood of the Snake. He was also featured in the accompanying music video. In 2007 he appeared on Paulina Rubio's single, Nada Puede Cambiarme. In 2008 Slash played guitar on the film score of The Wrestler composed by Clint Mansell. Slash was the featured guitarist on the 2008 Italian hit single Giocca Con Me by Italian singer-songwriter Vasco Rossi. In 2009 he was featured on Rihanna's single Rockstar 101 of her album Rated R in 2011 he contributed the song Kick It Up a Notch to the Disney Channel animation Phineas and Ferb the movie Across the Second Dimension. He appeared in both live action and animated form in the promotional music video. Other Ventures A self-described film buff slash has had small parts in several films and television series. 
In 1988 he appeared with his Guns N' Roses bandmates in the Dirty Harry film The Deadpool, in which his character attends a musician's funeral and shoots a harpoon. He played radio DJ Hank in a 1994 episode of the horror anthology television series Tales from the Crypt. Slash was a guest star where Space Ghost Zora can Malta teach him how to do guitar licks but he refuses to do any of that. In an episode of the live-action, animated talk show Space Ghost Coast to Coast on Cartoon Network. In 1999, he appeared as the host of the Miss America Bag Lady pageant in the widely panned film The Underground Comedy Movie. He has also appeared as himself in several projects, including Howard Stern's Private Parts in 1997, The Drew Carey Show in 1998, Mad TV in 2005, and Sasha Baron Cohen's Bruno in 2009. Slash voiced a recurring caricature of himself in Robert Evans' animated television series Kid Notorious, which aired in 2000. 2003 on Comedy Central, as in real life Slash is Evans' close friend and next-door neighbor on the show. He played Billy Butterface in the R-rated television show Metalocalypse on the Adult Swim. On May 5, 2009 he appeared as the guest mentor for the Rock and Roll Week of American Idol. In 2010, Slash formed Slasher Films a horror film production company. Its first film, Nothing Left to Fear, was screened in select cities on October 4, 2013 before being released on DVD and Blu-ray the following Tuesday. Slash appeared on the October 26, 2014 episode of Talking Dead. He is reported to be a massive fan of horror movies. Slash's autobiography, simply titled Slash, was published on October 30, 2007. It was co-written with Anthony Bozza. Slash also made several contributions to The Heroin Diaries, A Year in the Life of a Shattered Rock Star, the autobiography of Motley Crue bassist and backup singer Nikki Six, which was also published in 2007. Slash is a pinball enthusiast and collector. He has participated in the design process for the 1990 Four Data East Guns N' Roses Pinball Machine and the 1998 Sega Machine Viper Night Driven. Slash is a playable character in the video game Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock released in 2007. His performance was motion captured to record his movements for the game. Slash's character becomes playable after a player beats him in a one on one competition which then leads to the player and Slash playing the master track of Welcome to the Jungle. Guitar Learning Game, Simulator Rocksmith 2014 by Ubisoft released a Slash song pack, with several of the latter compositions by the artist available, to purchase as downloadable content and learn on the guitar. A keen artist slash designed logos and artwork for several of his pre-Guns N' Roses bands as well as the famous circular GNR logo. He is also credited as having provided some artwork for Aerosmith's 2012 album, Music from Another Dimension, as it reproduces a picture of the band drawn by Slash when he was still a teenager. Slash is a fan of the Angry Birds series of video games and created a hard rock version of the Angry Birds space theme song. In addition, Slash has a bird's avatar shown in the game released in March 2013. Personal Life On October 10, 1992 Slash married model actress Renee Shoran in Marina del Rey, California. They divorced in late 1997 after five years of marriage. Slash married Perla Ferrara on October 15, 2001 in Hawaii. They have two sons, London Emilio and Cash Anthony. Slash filed for divorce from Ferrer in August 2010 but the couple reconciled two months later. In December 2014, he again filed for divorce. 
Afterwards he moved in together with his girlfriend Megan Hodges, whom he previously dated from 1989 until the beginning of the 1990s. Slash is a dual citizen of the United Kingdom and the United States. A British national. Since his London birth he has resided in Los Angeles since 1971, but did not acquire American citizenship until 1996. He said in 2010, I do consider myself British. I have very strong feelings about my British heritage. My first years were there I went to school there, and I have seemingly endless family on that side of the pond. So I've always felt most comfortable in England. In 2001 at the age of 35 Slash was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy, a form of congestive heart failure caused by his many years of alcohol and drug abuse. Originally given between six days and six weeks to live, he survived through physical therapy and the implantation of a defibrillator. Slash has been clean and sober since 2005 which he credits to his then-wife Ferra. In 2009 following his mother's death from lung cancer he quit smoking. Slash has been recognized for his long-time contributions to establishing environmental welfare programs. He is a board trustee of the Greater Los Angeles Zoo Association and has long supported the Los Angeles Zoo and zoos around the world. Slash's love of reptiles was, for many years, a notable aspect of his public persona worth several of his many snakes appearing with him in music videos and photo shoots until the birth of his first son in 2002 forced him to rehome in his collection. Slash's friendship with Guns N' Roses frontman Axel Rose soured following his departure from the band. In 2006, Rose claimed that Slash had shown up at his house uninvited the previous year to offer a tr truce. He alleged that Slash had insulted his Velvet Revolver bandmates, telling Rose that he considered Scott Weiland a fraud and Duff McKagan spineless and that he hated Matt Sorum. Slash denied the accusations. In his 2007 autobiography, he admitted to visiting Rose's home with the intention to settle a long-standing legal dispute and make peace with his former bandmate. He claims, however, that he did not speak with Rose, and instead merely left a note. Slash maintains that he had not spoken with Rose in person since 1996. In 2009, in response to a statement by Rose in which he referred to Slash as a cancer, Slash commented, It doesn't really affect me at all. It's been a long time. The fact that he has anything to say at all, it's like, whatever dude, it doesn't really matter. In an August 2015 interview, Slash stated that he is now on good terms with Rose. Slash also rejoined Guns N' Roses in 2016. Philanthropy Slash is an honorary board member of Little Kids Rock, a national non-profit that works to restore and revitalize music education programs in disadvantaged public schools. He has visited Little Kids Rock students jammed with them and donated instruments and his time. Slash's passion for music is evident in his charity as well as his art. Being a musician is something that is good for the character because it teaches you a lot about discipline slash said. I think it's a really great creative outlet. Equipment Slash owns more than 100 guitars. He prefers the Gibson Les Paul which he has called the best all-around guitar for me. Gibson has credited him and Zach Wilde with bringing the Les Paul back into the mainstream in the late 1980s. His main studio guitar is a 1959 Gibson Les Paul standard replica built by Luthier Chris Derrick, which he came to own during the recording sessions for Guns N' Roses' debut album Appetite for Destruction. He used that guitar on every subsequent album he recorded with Guns N' Roses, 
and Velvet Revolver. For many years his main live guitar was a 1988 Gibson Les Paul Standard. Signature guitars since 1997 slash has collaborated with Gibson on 15 signature Les Paul models feed through Gibson USA, 6 through the Gibson Custom Shop, and 4 through the Gibson subsidiary Epiphone. He has also collaborated on signature equipment with other companies. In 1996, Marshall introduced the Marshall slash signature JCM2555, an authentic reissue of the Marshall. Silver Jubilee JCM2555 released in 1987. It was the first signature amp ever produced by Marshall with production limited to 3000. In 2007, Jim Dunlop introduced the Crybaby SW95 slash signature wah. Designed after slash his own custom built Crybaby wah pedal. In 2010, Seymour Duncan and Introduced the Alnico 2 Pro slash APH2 pickups, which were designed to recreate the tone of Slash's main studio guitar. Also in 2010, Marshall introduced the Marshall AFD100, a recreation of the Marshall 1959 that Slash used for the recording of Appetite for Destruction, with production limited to 2300 on stage. Slash prefers Marshall amplifiers, particularly the Marshall Silver Jubilee JCM2555 amp. He used the rented early 1970s Marshall 1959 for the recording of Appetite for Destruction. Slash enjoyed the amp so much that he tried to keep it telling the rental company SIR that it had been stolen. However, the amp was repossessed by SIR. Employees after a roadie accidentally brought it to rehearsals at the store. For the recording of Velvet Revolver's debut album Contraband he used a Vox AC30 amp and small Fender tube amps and on their second album Libertad he used the Marshall Vintage Modern 2466 amp. On his eponymous debut solo album he used a Marshall JCM 800 issued as 4 and later on the subsequent world tour slash used his signature Marshall AFD 100 amp discography with Guns N' Roses with Slash's Snake Pit with Velvet Revolver 8 slash feet Miles Kennedy brought to you by wikivd.com would you like to know more?